Welcome to the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. If you don't know what Tucson International Academy it is, it's the network of schools, four of them around the city of Tucson, K-12, through that make college come true for their students. And uh, we have the good fortune of having a uh, principal of the central location. Is that, what, what is that East called? Broad. The east location and then um, the English, English, English language. Let me see, I can't even say it right. The English language um, instructor over at East Broadway as well. All campuses. Uh, all campuses. So, yeah. Yeah, so we have them here in studio with us. Um, Dr. J will be sh- sh- joining us shortly she's um i'm sure on an important call with the president or something of that nature definitely doing important work but um yeah she'll be here soon but definitely we have an action-packed show for you today a lot of good stuff to talk about out of tucson international academy so much has been happening but just assuming that um our listening audience has never heard of tucson international academy anymore um principal phil why don't you why don't you fill in tell us what is tucson international academy Okay, so it is uh, public public schools mm. uh, for like you said four mm. campuses, so charter school. Um, a lot of times, I've been surprised we get uh, confused with people thinking that we're a private school. Mm. And no, mm-hmm. absolutely, anybody can enroll, and it's tuition free. Mm. And uh, um, you know, it's just a it's a really good place to to be mm-hmm. um it's a intimate environment mm-hmm. it's not you're going to get you're not going to get lost in the crowd mm-hmm. um they're smaller on purpose mm-hmm. and you know students really get that sense of membership and belonging and sense of family mm-hmm. yeah and that's definitely something i've heard a lot in in the description of tucson international academy is it's like it's like a family and i and i, and I kind of agree with that so definitely being there Last week, right? Was That's right. Last week. You were. Um, it was. It was. Very you were a celebrity reader. I, mean, I felt during like our love of reading. Week, yeah, so. yeah. So, speaking of the love of reading week, explain explain the love of reading week to us, and um, and then we'll kind of go into what what that entailed. Well, uh, so a week ago, love of reading week, mm-hmm. um, just a, a focus on how important reading is and having a bunch of different activities. And mm-hmm. it was a great opportunity to bring people from uh, the outside mm-hmm. um, that, you know, in the community and having them read and mm-hmm. just it's uh, exposures and it's added opportunities for our students. Mm-hmm. And so and what are you you're not. Your thoughts, Miss Cannon, on because um, you—I mean, you've been. I'm get, I wouldn't be surprised if you were probably around in the conceptualization of the the Love of Reading Week. What is um, what have you seen around the the Love of Reading Week and kind of how that has progressed to to where it is today? Well, the Love of Reading Week began, I believe, when Dr. J and Mr. Herrera and a few from leadership went to the JT Fox conference mm. in 2016, mm-hmm. and. There's a couple there, Mama Goose and Papa Goose, Mm -hmm. and they're children's Mm -hmm. authors. They're quite brilliant. They're really lovely people. Mm -hmm. And so they just connected, and they've been coming for the Love of Reading Week every year for the past, I think, four, maybe five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. they've published tons of books. They live in Houston, and we're the only schools that that they come to. Nice. Because we have that connection, and they come and they make the visit to all the campuses when they're there. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's awesome. And like, yeah, Mama and Papa Goose, they're something else. Yes. Yeah, they man, they're amazing. Like, it's definitely if being around them, even me, made me say, okay, I need to step my game up. These guys are serious, like from head to toe, uh, real inside deal. and out. Yeah, <laughs> and just, um, I mean, I, I think I heard something like they have published 5,000 books or something of that nature? I think uh, something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's got like yeah. five to 7,000 books in the queue, and mm. she's working on getting mm-hmm. them all published and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. That's wild. And then I guess explain to us, um, they they did a little contest with your students to create their own books. And I actually saw those books having, having my own children's book um, – I was impressed. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I need to, I wish I could have them help make my book because it was a very quality book that these kids made." So, I guess tell us more about that. 
Yeah, well, that's uh, one of the things that we're very blessed to have that opportunity. The um, Because of them, Mama mm-hmm. and Papa Goose, they set up this contest, and so students had um, put in a submission based on criteria that they that they gave for a children's book Mm -hmm. and they have it professionally edited and um, illustrated and Mm -hmm. yeah you're right it comes out really high quality children's book and it gives an opportunity how many kids get to say that Mm -hmm. you know I was in I was in elementary or middle school and I got a book published Mm mm-hmm so it's a really yeah. it's an incredible opportunity. How many opportunity. adults could say that? You yeah, know? well, not yeah. me. So. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was. I mean, and it's, and, and you're you're absolutely right. I mean, the the quality, the the opportunity. I mean, it's just mind blowing. But I guess that's kind of like, that's the that is Tucson International Academy. You know, making opportunities, opening doors that kids didn't even realize were there. Well, I I totally agree with you because I think anybody can. Um, any school district, yeah, they're going to focus on the academics, and that's, you know, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But that's only part of the journey Mm -hmm. and part of what the experience should be. Mm -hmm. And it's just, again, that commitment to um, providing opportunities, providing exposure Mm -hmm. to to different things, and it just really expands what people believe is possible for them. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, that it's just this whole idea because as I was driving in here today, I was thinking, man, isn't it frustrating and going to college? Like I have, I'm going to, I'm in business school right now and I want to get a business degree. Why do I got to take Spanish and, and history and all these other things? Why can't I just take a business class? But to your point, it's because I don't, you don't, you don't get to that place by just focusing in on this this one area you get to that place by taking in as much as you possibly can and being as well-rounded as you possibly can so that thing that you want to accomplish you have as much depth and as much feel as possible to explain it so i mean definitely in kind of in the same vein of yeah. of what tucson international academy does is like okay yeah you guys handle the school part pretty well you know grades are great get kids graduated not only that, you, you get them, you pushing them to get into college. Not only that, but you're teaching them about all these other cultures and being part of these uh, events. Not only that, but, you know, so it's like it is kind of yeah. it's almost like a little taste of the college experience before they even get into college. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think they do an exceptional job. Yeah, I'm definitely biased, but mm-hmm. I think they do an exceptional job of uh, providing those opportunities for our students, whether mm-hmm. it's. Uh, junior achievement events or mm. uh, career fairs or, like you said, taking international trips or mm. um, the the college road trips that they're going to take. Mm. Um, those are just incredible opportunities that um, anybody can bake the cake mm. of having a school. You know, mm. but having a school that really does go above and beyond, providing those opportunities and just planting that seeds of what's possible, whether mm. it's college, whether it's writing a book, or um, being an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. It just, you know, plants the seeds. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk about all that and more after this break. This is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. We'll be right back. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I am Pastor John McClain here. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My favorite part of my show. (laughs) Here with the superintendent of Tucson International Academy, a former Tucson Unified School District educator, the author of the book that this very show was named after, Making College Come True, 10 Keys to Success. You can find it on Amazon. (laughs) And also the still, still the newest talk radio show host, in the fair city of Tucson. We need new, new talk Come radio on, show hosts. Yeah, you gotta step your game up. <laughs> but, but anyways, her name is Dr. Jennifer Herrera. Yay! Yay, also yay, known yay. as Dr. J. <laughs> the Dr. J. Who who knows yeah. about that other guy? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He was boring. <laughs> but anyways, while Dr. J was away, we were talking about 
uh, the love of reading week. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miss Cannon definitely filled us in on Mm -hmm. the background of it pretty well. Kind of, you know, you meeting Mama and Papa Goose at the J.T. Fox event. And the rest was beautiful history. Yes. And then um, just talking about kind of, you know, what it is exactly explained to people. But what we had not got to yet were exactly the particulars. I mean, like the different type of guests that that went and spoke at the school and read their books and so on at the Love of Reading Week. And I had the good fortune of going and speaking at the Tucson International uh, Academy East Campus on the same day as the Phoenix. Yes, <laughs> yes, the Phoenix. Yeah. So, so, yes, Lucha Libre. I know, so thankfully I did get to read my children's <laughs> book that I recently wrote called Dear Lion, uh-huh. Homelessness Explained to Kids. Um, but I, and then kind of like shuffling in and out at the same time was, um, was Mr. Herrera. Who, oh, yes. who's I didn't even realize he made his own children's book, huh? No, no, but uh, what, what he book probably was he re- should. <laughs> the book that he was reading, what was that book? That's just a book he that found he, that he, okay. he saw the kids connected to. He, okay. he taught for 12 years. Uh-huh. He was a full-time, okay. he's a certified Spanish mm-hmm. teacher. He taught um, kinder through 12th grade for mm-hmm. 12 years. I just assumed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you I guess tell. put that put that <laughs> bug in his ear because, like, he certainly he seems like he has a heart for it. Yeah, he does. Mm-hmm. He enjoys it. He likes to connect with the kids on things that are culturally uh, Mexican or mm-hmm. even you know Latin American. And um, there's a lot of books that could still be written. You're right. That's a yeah. good idea. I'll tell him. I don't see why not. <laughs> You know? I thought it was an yeah. undercover boss issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he came in in a mask. Yeah, yeah, this guy. Yeah, you don't know me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's 100% in when he's in. <laughs> yeah, 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 I saw that. No, it was, halfway. It, and it's funny, that was the first time that my wife ever met him. So, oh wow! Yeah, so she met the phoenix. Yeah, yeah she met the That's phoenix. Like <laughs> she still hasn't met your husband, but she, yeah, yeah she's done that. <laughs> for sure. But yeah, but to speak on you know my experience there, it was it was amazing. Like wow, it was amazing. But I mean, kind of before you came in, we were just doting on on TIA because <laughs> it and then probably the main point we were talking about is just like the idea that I I had like even driving here today is like. And going to college, I wish I could just take my business class. Like that'd be great. Yeah. I, and just let, why why don't I just take my business class? But I realized that I need more than just business to even be a good businessman <coughs> to accomplish what I I need. And it's like Tucson International Academy more than a you know maybe any other school that I've seen kind of integrates that as well. Like yeah. it's not just about scholastics, and it's not just about getting kids into school with Tucson International Academy. It's also about the culture and the events and integrating mm-hmm. kids into this and and this the love of reading and, and kind of giving the kids access to all these other people making their own book yeah, and the ja funny. and all this other stuff <laughs> so it's like tucson international academy yeah it, it helps get kids graduated from from high school and it helps get kids into college and mm-hmm. it does this yes. and it does that so it's super cool that it has that but to speak to my experience and and go in there one I don't know how I'd never been to a Tucson International <laughs> Academy <laughs> campus before, but well, um, it was real cool to see. And it was just like, it was weird how it was like almost the perfect size, yeah. you know, not too big, not too small, just like, just exactly what it needed to be. And then going, you know, and I spoke to three different groups of age groups of kids and it was just so much fun. Like for one, the first group, the little kids and you got the just like as an audience (laughs) would imagine it you got the little chair in front of a whole bunch of little people at your feet and they're they were biters (laughs) yeah they were just ready (laughs) and um and i just um i really didn't this being my first reading i really didn't know what to expect i really didn't even know how to do it but there was just a comfortability with that school with with your staff you know Mm -hmm. even with the kids like even though these are just like teeny little kids like you know i got got kids this age that like they can barely sit in the same place for 30 seconds yeah they're really attentive they're really into it they're really polite they i mean they definitely seem like they love the heck out of me so it was they just did. They, it was such a pleasure they just love um like 
immersing themselves in whatever it is we're reading mm-hmm. and especially if it's interesting and your mm-hmm. book is interesting and it is something that they can relate to mm-hmm. i mean it's it's and then they're meeting another author which we've already talked to them about oh you know you're gonna meet mama goose and papa goose are authors and mm-hmm. then here's another author and uh just it's just fun yeah then the kids are we kind of teach them how to be hospitable because I mean, really, to be honest, um, Pastor John, we did throw you to the fire. I mean, let's, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's think about it. I mean, you did all age groups, and each age group is very different. Mm-hmm. You know, the little mm-hmm. ones, have like you have to be a little more animated. Mm-hmm. But for you, you just kind of do it naturally because mm-hmm. you're good with kids. Mm-hmm. The next group, you were kind of the middle school, and they, you know, they just are interested in a little bit. But why? But you know, but. Hmm. How how come this exists? You know mm-hmm. that they're they're like just now starting to realize well, there is a lot of homeless. Well, why is that? And then the ones in high school, mm. I was really surprised. They're just too cool for school. The high school yeah. kids, <laughs> <laughs> but they were so honest. Yeah. You said, how many of you have someone in your family who's homeless? Mm. And several raised their hands. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, you know this is a real issue, and they knew it, and they shot their hands up. You know they weren't shy about it. And then you know, do you know someone? And by the third question you asked, everybody had their hand up. Mm-hmm. I mean. Everybody is aware that there is a an issue of homelessness, and mm-hmm. it, while it may not seem to be all bad, it's also not all good. And so, what are we as a community going to do about it? You really raised a question, mm-hmm. so I, I thought it was powerful. Yeah, <laughs> and, and for me too. I mean, I definitely going into it, I was just I'm just happy to share this information mm-hmm. with people. I mean, having worked yeah. in homeless advocacy for over 15 years, it's just like. Any new person that I can get, not hate a homeless person, then, <laughs> then that's a win. But yeah. just this this experience, I mean, and I and I'm hooked. I yeah. mean, now that I've oh, spoke for these kids, awesome. like I'm gonna. I, this is part of my life now. Yeah, I'm gonna I be love it. Reading this book and making more and sharing sharing this with kids. But like, but you're absolutely right. I mean, it was, mm-hmm. and and I and I'll ch- turn this question to um, Principal Phil after after I kind of speak to it. Working with the little kids is one type of energy. Then I, I deal with the middle school kids, which is kind of like a blend of the little kids <laughs> yep. and the older kids. So it's kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of mm. cool, but I'm still kind of <laughs> a little animated. But then with the older kids, like it's almost like I'm talking to a, a peer where mm-hmm. I'm just like, I'm using a little slang, I'm acting a little <laughs> hip, I'm just like, I'm really trying to like integrate the stuff that I, I watch on yeah. MTV. And it's, yeah, it's definitely a different world. What is, what is, what challenges do you find kind of day to day as a principal, you know, going in one classroom and it's all little kids, you go in the next classroom and it's all people that are about to go to high school. What is that like? And I guess, actually hold your answer. We have, we have to go to break now, but <laughs> this is the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I'm Pastor John McClain here with Dr. J, Principal Phil, and over there in the corner hiding, we have uh, Mrs. Cannon, <laughs> the English language instructor. And yes. uh, we'll be right back after this break. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Hello, welcome back to the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I am Pastor John McClain here with the one and only Dr. Jennifer Herrera of Tucson International Academy. She's a superintendent. If you didn't know, she actually was one of the founders of it. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's super cool. (laughs) So yeah, I I feel honored to every time I get to hang out with you and every time I get to share a studio with you. So thank you. Uh, Thank you. Likewise. (laughs) And before we went to break, um, I asked uh, Principal Phil a question um, about working with the different age groups. Like uh, definitely something I saw going from a elementary age class to a middle school age class to a high school age class. Like I feel like I felt like a chameleon <laughs> because I was just like changing who I was every single time. I felt I felt like a little bad. I was like, is is this me? Am I am I pretending? I don't know. But but I know this hmm. must be something you face daily. So tell what is that like? And you know, and, and I guess how have you adjusted to it? Well, I think it's uh, uh you know, learn as you go. Mm-hmm. And but you definitely do need to change your messaging or your approach based mm-hmm. on you know the age of the students and you know the the circumstances so mm-hmm. yeah definitely that's a consideration mm-hmm. it's it it is way different when you're uh, talking to a little smurf a little kindergartner mm-hmm. compared <laughs> to you know you've got somebody that's in high school and mm-hmm. they're planning to go to college and they're working you know 20 plus hours mm-hmm. and juggling school mm-hmm. and so yeah um you know you can have a more rich and detailed 
uh, conversation with the older students mm. and um, man, the little ones, they just, boy, they speak their truth though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, they'll, they'll put you in check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they were. It was funny. One of the little girls <laughs> in, uh, in the elementary class, because in, in the, one of the last pages of my book, the character marries a woman and, and the little girl saw the picture of the woman and, and she's like, is this your wife? And I was like, no, that's not my wife. That's the wife of the character. And and she's like, oh, yeah, I know it's not your wife because this woman doesn't look anything like your wife who's in the back of the room. <laughs> and I was like, yes, you're right. Um, yes, that's a good observation. <laughs> yes, well done. So, yeah, yeah, they they don't hold back, I imagine. Not at all. For sure. Yeah. And I guess let's, let's um, jump over to the JA event you guys just mm-hmm. had recently. And yeah. I guess... Um, from a principal's point of view, explain to us and to our listening audience what that is, and let's, let's dig into it. Well, uh, JA's organization, Junior Achievement, mm-hmm. and so it's, a, I believe, international now. Um, mm-hmm. International. But definitely Actually. nationally. Yeah. Um, I've been in other states and schools, and we've had that, but uh, um, what we just experienced was JA Heroes, mm. and so JA supplied all the materials, the um, the materials are in line with the uh, Arizona you know, standards mm. and, um, I mean, just really professional, high, quali- uh, high caliber mm-hmm. uh, quality of how they approach things. And um, basically, in a nutshell, it's called Heroes Day. Mm-hmm. And so we train, JA helps us to train and provide the materials. Um, our students, the high school students, they present the material to the younger grades Mm. and so they're they're teaching it they're being a role model they're learning Uh, Mm. the best way to learn is to teach Mm -hmm. and uh just an incredible incredible experience again Mm. it it, it's those extra opportunities being Mm -hmm. able to be in front of a of a group and and preparing for a presentation mm. and you know you've got these little bodies and these little eyes looking at you mm-hmm. and, and you want to do a great job and yeah, it was don't just, I know yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, it just uh, it was yeah. it, it was an incredible event um, mm. kids knocked it out of the park and um, and the the younger students oh my god they really enjoyed it mm. it was just mm-hmm. it was again it's not every school does things like that and that's Mm. part of what should make um a complete education Mm -hmm. is just again providing those opportunities Mm. um planting those seeds Mm -hmm. and what's possible and financial literacy or um guest readers and learning about homelessness and Mm. developing a a, a more acute sense of empathy and Mm. compassion and you know serving your community and um, there's just so many things that you can't learn um, just from a worksheet or a book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I, I guess I, I extend it to you, Miss Cannon, just because you're back there, and I feel bad for you. I want you to I want you to be part of the conversation. <laughs> um, what have you seen um, out of JA that's had you know a, a level of impact and has really kind of affect these children in a positive way? Well, this is the first year we've had JA. And- Unfortunately, I was testing at the different campuses, mm. so I actually did not get to see. See, that's what happens when I try to include you. you see, <laughs> 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 well, well, actually, she's got so many <laughs> talents. Yeah. 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 So, actually, know. I was going to ask you earlier at the same time as uh, Principal Phil, what is what is it like, you know, working, you know, particularly in your in your uh, specialty with an elementary age person versus, you know, working with one of the older kids and what are some of the challenges that you face? (laughs) Well, I'm definitely a little kid teacher. Mm, (laughs) (laughs) And I have been working with middle school and high school this year, so Mm, it's been a learning curve. (laughs) Oh, yeah. How so? I had to adjust to them, get to know them, develop that relationship and rapport and Mm -hmm. uh, incorporate art, you know, use what interests them to get them motivated and mm-hmm. working on and writing about it, reading about it, writing about it. Mm. Yeah. Getting them to, to so just, have an attitude too, right? That will, that is conducive to learning. Yeah. And the high yeah. school boys are really into cars. So mm. and they just get all excited about it and show me, look at this car mess. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so, okay, well, read me about it. Tell me about it. You know, write about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so interest so interest you driven. Just works. Definitely have to get to know them and nice and see where they're where they're at and get them involved in something that interests them. Uh, versus with the elementary age, what what how do you get them them hooked in? Well, they love everything. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sing a song about it. That works. Yes, yeah. if you sing, it works. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I learned that <laughs> back when my my now twelve and thirteen year old mm. boys when they're seven and eight. I learned two things. One, if I'm talking a pirate voice, it or, works. Or if I sing, <laughs> they'll do it. Yeah. Like, Come on, guys, let's go clean our room. Yeah, find some treasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or walk the plank. Yeah. <laughs> or walk the plank. That's right. <laughs> Offer their heads. Arr. Can you make anything a game or a competition? They just love okay. it. Oh yeah, yeah, that nice. works too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, mm-hmm. when I went and spoke. I had in my back pocket that little activity about, okay, if you have a family member, have you ever had a friend that was homeless? You ever, you, anybody know anybody was homeless? And that seemed to kind of get the ball oh, rolling. definitely. Yeah, but I really, I had no idea what to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was trying to set it up for you, and it wasn't working. Mm-hmm. I mean, they looked at me like, like, Mm-hmm. Hello, are you home? I mean, I, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, they definitely looked at, look, looked at you like you were uh, authority. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fun, darn it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will talk about all that and more after this break. This is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Yeah, that's Tucson International Academy, K-12. through If you want to make your college come true for your student, go there now. We'll be right back. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Hello, welcome back. I hope you guys went potty and got yourself a little snack. This is the uh, the last se- segment of the show, so um, you'll want to hear all these this goodies. And speaking of all the goodies, uh, a couple shows, a few shows back, we were talking about a stock market challenge mm-hmm. that Tucson International Academy was part of. Why don't you go ahead and update us on uh, how that went and um, just just more about it. It's interesting. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and speak to <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> Stock Market Challenge, That's a, again, it's a great event. Um, Jay is not an event. They're a program, mm. and they're a partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so what was really neat about it is, you know, gave students an overview of the stock market and how would you go, um, you know, what to look for, and the culminating activity with with this mm-hmm. um, was about how you don't have to be rich to be able to to invest and mm-hmm. in, to get into stocks and and to use that as a, a means of increasing your income and mm-hmm. so just went into all kinds of things about you know um, diversify your portfolio mm-hmm. and yeah. and all this financial literacy mm-hmm. stuff that's mm-hmm. great and it's like I was listening and I'm like oh I didn't know that what an index fund and yeah. then, you know mm-hmm. yeah and, 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 and that's right. now that you mentioned that I definitely remember having a couple of the kids on and they were talking about it and yeah they said stuff where I was just like. I need, to start, you know that? I need to start paying attention to that. Like they were talking, I was asking them, okay, how did you know to to buy this stock or how did you know to sell this stock? And they're like, well, we're seeing what the CEO of this organization was getting into trouble and this and this happened. So we knew that, that we definitely should probably get out of that one. And I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah, well, I, I should pay attention to that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But that exactly. was part of, part of the learning and how, um, <laughs> you know, perception of a company could influence the stocks mm-hmm. or a certain crisis in a region of the world mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. might not be able to get the resources they need and mm-hmm. that would influence the stock and so it was just it was a great opportunity for kids to learn and, mm-hmm. and again you know i can't remember the exact amount but i don't know they got a hundred thousand in play money and mm-hmm. did the simulation mm-hmm. but uh, long story short heck broadway uh you know tia came in ninth in the state mm. in terms of the stock market mm. which and is not easy it was like a hundred and some schools yeah. so we were all happy about that and that was your school in particular yeah so awesome. again it was just a, <laughs> it was a great opportunity in planting yeah. the seeds and in expanding their view of what is possible for them mm-hmm. that you know well yeah i guess it's possible but other people you know not for me no mm-hmm. it, you can do it yeah you can do it you know you're gonna have to there's a learning curve you gotta uh be involved in and mm-hmm. and listen to other people and use those resources but mm-hmm. yeah you can you can do this too you can change your circumstances mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean and you're absolutely right it's like 
it's almost in um, the exact same vein as planning into their head you can go to college this idea which i mean at 16 17 18 i wish i would have started putting some money into stock like whether it buy a little share mm-hmm. of ford here a little share of facebook there you know it could could have changed more world particularly at that time i mean particularly kids they really have their finger to the pulse of what's what's popping and, and you know what's mm-hmm. coming around the corner like the big thing that me and my boys can talk about all day long is cryptocurrency oh yeah and mm-hmm. nfts like mm-hmm. I, I barely know about this but my <laughs> my young teenage boys are telling me oh you you know about cryptocurrencies and nft dad are you gonna get something blah, blah, blah. so it's just like yeah they they know and if and if we can put into their heads now like you should be investing into that now not like this isn't a just a grown-up thing like right. you think this is an everybody thing no. yeah I, I was just um had lunch with my daughter today and she was telling me that a friend that she knows um that she's been in touch with for about a year now uh he was telling her when he was in high school he started two businesses and he recently just sold both of those businesses and that's gonna mm. get be well enough money and through college mm. I'm like what what she and he's younger than her and she's like yeah how does that happen i mean he created these when he was in college a freshman in college and well Mm -hmm. they were ready to be sold to someone else for someone you know to have value enough to get big bucks for Mm -hmm. it so amazing it it is very possible and if if the kids have any sort of encouragement to to look at data to research a little bit about it and to take some risks and it's a great way with the stock market challenge to take risks because it's not your money so mm-hmm. you can choose to risk or not. What I found interesting was um, I was at TIA West, and there was certain groups of kids that didn't do anything with the money because they said, well, we got $100,000. Let's just hang on to it. Mm. And we're like, whoa, hold on. Why would they think that? But that's how we get sometimes, right? We get mm-hmm. in fear, and we're like, well, but we have this, you know. And it took so, you know Mindsets. Yeah, it's mm. mindsets. And so to help them understand that, yes, while you still have your 100 this other group has like millions, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so that's the difference, you know, d- depends on what you do with what you have. And mm-hmm. it was a great lesson because they were like, oh, well, we should have done something. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, analyzing, you know, risk, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, doing a risk analysis mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. taking different factors into to account and mm-hmm. and uh, just, you know, how to research, mm-hmm. you know, right. your investment and. Mm-hmm. Um, just talking long term rather than being a day trader. I mean, it was real a lot of detail. <laughs> mm, mm. I mean, even as an adult, it was a great uh, stock market 101 or mm. investing 101 it for was. for mm. dummy adults. Yeah. I mean, it was great for me. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Mm-hmm. I, I had a, a teacher um, down at Midvale uh, about, I don't know, 10 years ago, and he had just learned about stocks, and he was a young guy. And he um, invested for the kids, but he gave stock to kids with the parents' permission. Mm. And they, it was a dollar stock, a dollar stock. Mm. And um, he waited, I think it was, I don't know, eight months. And those kids had over $100. Mm. And they were like, oh, my God. And he gave that money. I mean, that was their money because mm-hmm. it was in their name and it was their stock. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody mm. was like, wow, how did that work? I mean, they just scratching their heads. And so I'm pretty sure that, like, lit the fire. And mm-hmm. hopefully they they have, you know, looked at that and been able to do something with it. But mm-hmm. that's like you said. It doesn't matter the amount of money. Mm-hmm. A dollar. A dollar. And in eight months, it turned into over 100 mm-hmm. Gosh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. And I think uh, overall the message is just like the growth with investment. I mean, I, I, yeah. before we started the show, I was telling Miss Cannon and, and um, Principal Phil about how I was in a, a program similar to JA when I was in fifth grade. I think I've told yeah. you about this before where like every Friday we'd go and we'd each get a job and we'd kind of like all operate within this marketplace. And I started mm-hmm. off at the post office and then halfway through, they transferred. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Even though it was funny enough, at the post office, I created a little activity card, much like this newsletter. Yeah. Like, I got employee of the month, so that was cool. But, oh, that's but, very cool. Yeah. So that was I amazing. remember that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember. It was fifth grade. That's how big of an impression I made. And then later yeah. on in that same year, I moved from the post office over to being a business owner. Mm-hmm. And, and that was, you know, at, at 10 years of age, kind of when the light bulb came on to me, I should be a business owner. Entrepreneurship's mm-hmm. for me because because not only was I really good at it, I ended up hiring somebody mm-hmm. to run it, and I just got to play all day during that activity. But 
I was making 10 times as much as a business owner than yeah. I was at the post office. Right. And from that, I mean, as we know, yeah. we've read the, the book, Dear Alyssa, I started my first business when I was 13 years old because of that, that seed that was planted in my head when I was 10 years old. You got the yeah. fever. You, mm-hmm. you saw what was possible. And mm-hmm. that's half of what teaching is. All we do is try to open the doors to what's possible. Mm. And you encourage the kids to pursue their personal interests, their personal passions, and what mm. they feel convicted about, like, you know, homelessness. Mm. Um, for me, it's children. I mean, just helping form opportunities for them that they might not get otherwise. Mm-hmm. And I love doing our our K-12 because the little kids get to watch the big kids as they do some of these things. The big kids in the J.A. Heroes taught the little kids. Mm -hmm. You know, having the big kids of your school that you idolize come in your room and do lessons with you. Ooh, that's like Mm -hmm. wonderful to Mm -hmm. them, you know. And the big kids are like, why do they like us? You know, and I'm thinking, (laughs) I don't know either. But (laughs) but they do. They see you and you are somebody and you're important to them. And then because of our small schools, they're able to see the importance of being your best self because mm. you don't know who's watching. Mm-hmm. You don't know what opportunities around the door either. So around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure. And um, I guess what are, what are some of the, some other um, events Tucson International Academy has coming up? We've got about two minutes so we oh, have to jump out of here. We, got, we have Chinese New Year's, our next big event. Okay. It's going to be at the Burger. It's right. going to be, uh, again, kindergarten through 12th grade. It's about a two-hour event. Um, all the different classes will, will be performing, and they'll sing, they'll dance, they'll say nice. poems, they'll rap. Um, <laughs> hmm. They do a lot of things That's with these cool. in Mandarin Chinese. Mm-hmm. And as you know, we don't live near China, and there's really not a big Mandarin Chinese-speaking population here mm-hmm. in Tucson. So it is a truly a foreign language, so it's different. A lot of our kids are bilingual already with Spanish mm-hmm. and English. Um, so it's kind of neat to throw that third language in that's totally different. And, mm-hmm. you know, Mandarin, Chinese, Spanish, and English, uh, 75% of the world speak those one of those three mm-hmm. languages. Mm-hmm. So it's like exposure to how to communicate to people all over the world. Mm-hmm. That's why we chose Mandarin Chinese to be added to Spanish and English. Yeah. But it, Chinese New Year's is huge. It's, it's um, so different. And, and so when is that? It's going to be on March 1st. March I think 1st. it's a Tuesday. Is that right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Tuesday yeah, night. That's coming up. 6 to 8 p.m. The next week. Right. Yeah, and it, it is open mm. to the public. Mm. Um, it's um, it's the kids. The kids do it all. And the, the Chinese teacher we have, Miss Sun, is amazing. Mm. She puts on the best program I've ever seen in my life. It's like uh, just just slightly under, uh, what is it called, Shen Yu? Or, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the yeah. professionals that come here to town mm. and perform. I nice. mean, I just love it. it. It's the kid version of that, and it's just a blast. It's without any political connotations. It's just um, um, dancing and singing to songs mm. in Chinese and, and demonstrating their ability in that language. Mm-hmm. Well, that's awesome. Well, cool. Well, this is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Thank you, Principal Phil, for being here. Miss Cannon. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Yeah, absolutely. We are enrolling right now. Yeah. Um, this is our big enrollment time because once we fill up, then, I mean, we are um, limited by how many spots we have. Mm-hmm. So we still have plenty of room for anyone at any of our four schools. Mm-hmm. But I would recommend if you're interested in having more than just a regular education for your child, check us out and that's what i would say to you parents do not settle for just whatever's near your house Mm -hmm. go out there and find a school that's going to challenge your kids give them opportunities they wouldn't have otherwise give them experiences and open the world to your kids so check us out tucson international academy.com that's right tucson international academy.com if you're looking to make college come true for your k-12 student go to tucson international academy.com today We'll catch you next week. This is the Make College Come True Radio Show brought to you by that very Tucson International Academy.